I'm stitching down this handle and I start up here where I ended my stitching for putting in the uh, the leather rope or leather uh, belting so I need to come in this is where this is the first stitch that is going to attach to the body of the bag and my top thread has to be the first one that goes through but I still have my bottom thread still on this side of the of the bag and it's still got to go through the same hole the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go through this hole and through the body of the bag and I'm going to go ahead and pull that through because that's just what you have to do I'm going to leave it loose enough that I can take my bottom thread and sneak it under there and still be able to pass it through that hole so the bottom thread is just going through the handle material and the top thread that is now the bottom thread goes through the body of the bag and the handle so that's your first thread you don't want to pull that too terribly tight but you gotta kinda give it a little bit of a pull and then my next one is going to stitch over here and sometimes that can be a little bit tricky because you got to find that other hole in the back so that one will go through all the way and then my back thread goes through and I'll pull that a little snug being that this yellow leather is kind of it's a little more supple than the green leather is a little heavier a little more firm I don't want to pull too terribly tight and then again I'll go through get that out of my way or I'll knock it on the floor now I'm going there's five holes across here when I get to the middle one I'm gonna go through it find it come on there it is Did that not punch all the way through oh it's keeping all handy through there if I don't have to let me punch through but now once I've got to the middle I'm going to go back over all the way over again and then I'm going to continue down this side and I'm going to end it down here and then when I start the other side I'll do exactly the same thing I'll go over to the middle and then come back and down so it gives me double thick thread on the top here where it really needs that extra support and that's all there is to it but it's just I just wanted to show you that little transition there and how I do that it's not too hard you figure it out after you after a little bit if you've done it once or twice both my handles stitched on I got these extra color pieces stitched on and I'm ready to assemble the bag put the sides together um, I'm making this a turned bag obviously as I said in the other videos I believe I don't know I haven't gotten to any editing on this series yet but um, so it's gonna be a turned bag which is 
going to be kind of tough because this is kind of heavy leather for a turned bag. Um, and it's kind of stiff, but hopefully it'll go okay. Um, we won't be putting a lining in until after it's turned. So you'll have to hang out for the lining part. Um, there are kind of two different ways we can do something like this. <clears throat> we can treat it as a turned bag, which is what I'm going to do with this one, mostly because of the way that I'm doing the added color on the bottom. Uh, the other way that you can do it is you can stitch together your side seams like this and just burnish one end. Um, and you can do that and then just turn up the two sides together. It's kind of a pain because you wind up having to stitch from the inside of the bag, but on a bag this side it's really not that difficult to do the stitching from the inside. But when you're adding a color like this, it's a little easier in most cases to do a turned bag. Uh, the Tootsie Tote wasn't so hard to turn because it was the yellow leather which is a little more pliable than the green leather here is. <clears throat> and the secondary leather on the Tootsie Tote was a lot uh, more supple as well. So I'm going to be doing a turned bag. I am not going to film me turning the bag out inside out because I am not expecting it to go very well. <laughs> turning a bag is a pain in the butt. But once I get the sides stitched, then it'll be time to put the bottom in. Um, and, I, you know, I'm going to do another, I'll do another bag. It won't be this big. I'm going to do a smaller bag with the side seams the other way, like I kind of just showed. Um, and I do the bottom a different way. And when I do that, I'll show how, kind of how that goes together that way. Um, it's a little different method to do it, and it kind of, yeah, you'll see. It's a little different method. It works out kind of nice. Um, after this goes in, being that it's, it's as soft as it is, um, I'll measure and I'll cut a bottom piece to go in here. And I will probably use, probably, what do I have up here? I'll probably use a 5 to 6 or a 6 to 7 ounce just a single piece of leather in here and it doesn't have to be great because the lining is going to cover it um, but I'll put a piece of heavier leather in, in on top of this to kind of give it a little the bottom a little more body I'll glue it to it I'll glue it on and uh, that way we won't have to worry about you know it'll have a little bit extra rigidity there <clears throat> so but we'll do that later right now I'm gonna go ahead I've got all my holes are punched I was very careful as I was getting to punch in the holes to make sure everything was going to line up and I should be able to go ahead and stick a needle through the top hole here and the top will go right through to this top hole and it should line up perfectly and it does. So it'll do that all the way down. I'm not looking so much for the side to line up perfect. I want perfect lining on the top. And that's where it's going to count, especially when we drop in that lining. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch it up. You've seen me stitch stuff before. It's really simple. Just down both sides is all I'm going to do. So we'll be back. Uh, I am not going to cast over the top um, to do that extra oh whatever you want to call it binding stitch over the top because of the drop-in lining so I'm not gonna do that we'll be stitching all the way around the top on this bag so stay tuned for that right now I'm gonna stitch up the sides and I'll be back now if you're like me you never have enough clips and I was watching um, Aaron Heiser at Make, Maker's Leather Supply when he made the man sack and he whipped out a nice little tool that made assembly pretty nice around corners and he had a leather stapler and I looked at it and it isn't anything real fancy he bought his at Tandy 
And I got to looking at it when I went to Tandy one day and I said, well, that's just a heavy duty stapler is all that is. That ain't no special leather stapler. So rather than pay Tandy's prices, I went on Amazon and I found me a heavy duty stapler <laughs> and some heavy duty staples at about a third of the price. So there you go. Um, I'll try to remember to put a link to this bad boy in the description there because it's kind of a nifty tool. I will use these little clips that I always use because they're just the handiest thing. Do I have them all here? No, it's like got all of them I've got. I really, really need to order some more of those because they are handy. So this is where I'm going to find out, was, I guess you'd say the rubber meets the road. I'm going to stick my bottom in there and line up my pen again. Ooh. Try to transfer this line kind of. To the edge there a little. So you can see it just a little bit better. Now you want this inside to inside. I keep forgetting we've got three pieces that we're trying to line up. We got the yellow piece that's ha attached to the body, we got the body, and we got the bottom. So we don't want to... I'm going to try to keep everything as flat as we can, which I was forgetting to do that. going to try to keep everything lined up as well as I can and I'm just going to use clips here as much as I can for now I'm not going to get too carried away and start stapling stuff although you could the more staples you use the more you have to take out just remember that all right I'm going to flip it over now remember, this is kind of, a, this is for a customer, at the same time, it's a prototype. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's doing double duty here. Now, I have to fold my bottom piece so that it comes over. I don't have much room to mark there because it's skived. So, I've got three clips on it, on each side. And now we kind of have to start bringing things up. And I have to get an idea if this is going to work around the corners. <clears throat> I have to move my clip in. Too close to the corner. And I'll line up my mark with my side seam.
Yep, I really do think this is going to work out real well. By the time we get it stitched, it's going to come We have to remember that we're going to be down a little farther. So I think we're going to be in good shape. I think I got lucky. Because <laughs> some of this, when it gets... Some of these measurements, you just kind of got to... You take a stab at it and you know you hope that when you prototype that things work out and you can't do much more than hope that you got it right. And now I'm out of clips. So, I think everything's going to be good. What I can do is put a couple of staples in here. And coming around the corner, I'm going to have them pretty close together. And I'll be taking them out as I go because I don't want to leave staples in it. So there's one corner, and I'll try to get that so you can see it a little better. Just got a few staples in there. I'm going to go around and get the other side there, and uh, I'll get it all set up. I'll come back and I'll show you a little bit how it looks before I stitch it, and then we'll stitch her up. 